Okay, today we're going to look at attacks from your opponent having a, a solid grip while you're standing. I could try to fight the grip, which potentially could make me off balance. Ideally, if I wanted to fight the grip, I would do it from the offset. But if my opponent makes a grip, it's actually um, pretty good in a few ways. Self-defense wise, this is one less hand that can actually punch me. Uh, if we're on the ground, this is one less hand that can post if we're trying to off balance. But a few options just from a simple grab, again, without attacking the grip, we'll look at some where we come over the top and maybe somewhere we're on the inside. So first and foremost, my preference when someone grips, I usually rest my hand over the top. And ideally this is, you know, for a loop choke, for example, people try to get a sneaky grip. If I have my hand resting over the top, the loop choke is pretty much negated. If I'm working on grips, she can toss me down and immediately get a loop choke. But if my hand rests over the top, it kind of negates that. Works the same on this side, right? It gives me a little bit of control. But one of the first options that I'm going to do from an old school jujitsu is, is basically do a strong reach. I don't have to do any attack on the body of the person. I'm, I'm literally snaking over and I'm just going to reach until I touch the ground. She most likely would let go because she feels herself falling. But it was much better than me trying to fight this grip. Now again, if she doesn't let go, this is definitely gonna cause her to go to the ground because I'm pushing to a rear area where she can't escape. So a simple resting arm over the top can allow us to reach into this hole. Let's take a look at what if we bring our hand on the inside. Again, from another old school, this is, this is actually very prevalent in ninjutsu. They call it onikudaki, crushing the devil. My hand's coming to the inside, which could be a flinch reflex, right? This other hand is actually going to reach behind the elbow, and I'm just going to make my hands come together by pulling this elbow back. Now, what you'll see is an Americana, basically from a different angle and obviously from standing. But again, this is started by not trying to fight the grip. I'm using the grip to my advantage, this time instead of over, just with an inside hand. So an inside grip, maybe we're fighting, but I reach through and I'm not gonna make my hand connection here. I'm gonna try to pull my elbow back to my ribs, which causes this off balancing motion. Now we can actually make this worse. I'm gonna turn her this way. There's a simple strategy of looking at where your opponent is looking, and it helps us learn how not to just use our arms as a mechanical lever, but our entire body. So grip, I have an inside position. I'm gonna reach through to the crook of my elbow, pull my arm back and make this connection. But now I wonder what she's looking at. Okay, let's take a second look at this Americana type shoulder lock from standing. Now I'm gonna talk about some principles, again, old school jujitsu tied into you know, our modern day, but crushing an opponent down is different than trying to project them away, throwing them forward or backwards. So again, with this inside position, reaching all the way through and then pulling back, yes, I have a shoulder lock. If I try to pull too much, she can still walk. If I try to throw her back, she could probably backpedal. Eventually I would get the throw. But there's a, a position that our body can't really handle, kind of like doing the limbo. And I don't have to use extra force to go forward or backwards. I'm literally dropping. And this is an old Daitoru Aiki Jiu Jitsu principle, dropping your opponent where they are. But you have to get your opponent into this prone position. From here, I, I don't need to do any extra force. I don't even need pressure on her shoulder. Does this hurt right now? Uh -uh, mm -mm, a little, she says. But without any without pressure, really. try to stand up. There's, there's not any cause for her to be able to keep her posture. There are other techniques where we do this the same. If we get our opponent waist to come forward, you can drop them straight down without extra force. So that's just a little detail behind that shoulder lock. 
It is a shoulder lock, but it's quite literally a drop. I'm gonna take a look at the first technique we did with an emphasis on actually trying to control and not allowing the, the opponent to escape. But we're gonna focus again on that detail of the angle and crushing the opponent rather than projecting it. So before I had an overhand grip or, or attack where I just went through the hole. Now she could let go. If I wanna secure this so she can't let go, maybe, maybe she's preventing me from grabbing this collar, but I can get this grip here. So by not allowing her to disengage, I'm just making a loop over and I'm going through this hole. But again, the point that I'm trying to get to is to where her body is slightly backwards. I don't need to throw backwards and I don't need to pull forward. I just need to get her right here. And as soon as I go ahead and fight this, as soon as I start a downward force, it's, it's crushing the opponent's balance is basically what's happening. So again, maybe I want this grip. Maybe I'm trying to force a Russian two on one and she pulls back. This is a, a pretty safe technique. I don't have, again, loop chokes coming in. I don't have an opportunity for take my back. So just another look at angling the opponent's posture back to that corner. There's another technique also from Daito Ru, you know, my favorite other art, from over the top. Again, not trying to fight the grip. I'm gonna circle my hand over and bring my pinky towards my stomach. And I had my opponent going forward. Now I could try to force down where she can post and maybe she'll grab a single leg or something so it's not smart. But the same principle of that slightly off balance crushing, maybe I get this grip again, but when I pull this forward, I'm just entering towards her shoulder and now there, there's no stopping the backfall. She may eventually go straight into some guard position, but it's still an effective principle behind many techniques. So again, this one is over the top, reaching my pinky towards my stomach. And then I'm just simply trying to reach and grab her other shoulder because this forward motion, she could go down and post, but as soon as the forearm goes under the, the throat, she's going backwards. So one more look at that straight grip. Maybe I want this because I want to secure and make sure she doesn't let go. But either way, I'm going over the top with a little bit of force, but I'm also circling. And then the hand immediately goes to the shoulder for this crushing pressure right behind her. So there's, there's another not quite so uh, tournament friendly version of this technique. In English, we'll call this the dog collar. <laughs> The same principle of bringing the opponent down, but now my hand fits right on her throat. So I'm basically bringing her down to the throat. And on the back, I'm just connecting and making this collar. Not, not a tournament friendly position again, but this throw, it's like a kubinage, a neck throw. I'm bringing her down, collecting this collar, and then I'm just turning her head and now she's at my, basically on her seat in front of me. So one, <laughs> one more look at that non-tournament friendly dog collar. The same principle of dragging forward, but now I'm reaching under the collar, or under the throat, connecting the collar. Even if she tries to stand, I'm turning her head and it, she ends up seated right in front of me.